it's finally time. I've been putting this off for a little bit too long. It's just been a really, really tough decision, but it's time to finally choose the winner of the Mattia Poya logo design competition uh, to announce my new logo. And before we do that, I just wanna say a massive thank you to all of you for submitting your designs. There was almost 400 logos submitted, which is way more than I ever thought were gonna be submitted. You guys are all super talented, and even if you're not part of the top three, uh, don't worry, you're still very, very talented. And it was actually fairly easy to narrow it down to like 10, and then it was like a little bit harder to narrow it down to five. And then it was okay narrowing it down to three, but to choose the actual winner was so hard because all three of these, the, the top three designs, I like very, very much. And that's why it took this long to choose the winner of this little logo competition, to choose the logo that I'm gonna be repping for the next um, however long. How long has Coca-Cola had the same logo? They're all incredible, but I finally did it with a whole bunch of thinking about it and asking my friends and family what they thought. It's time to unveil um, the new logo. Matt, can you come in here? Matt! Okay, so apparently I'm alone, so I'm just gonna have to do this unveiling of the logo by myself. You guys, you guys ready? The winner of the logo competition is behind this well, the logo is behind this, this drape here. Are you guys ready? I'm a little nervous, to be honest. I think, I hope, I think we made the right choice. I just... There it is. The new logo. The new Maddie Hapoya logo is here. It's beautiful. Thank you, Nicholas Doretti, for designing this bad boy. You did an incredible job with this logo. I was super impressed with it. I remember the first time I saw it right away, I was like, this might be it. Like, it was just, it had that it factor. It's hard to describe that it factor, but it had that it factor. And I'll go into it a little bit more of why we went with this logo. But first I gotta say, Nicholas, you are one talented dude. You did an amazing job designing this new logo. But on top of that, you also are an incredible animator. You did a little animation with the logo even. And your photography is super good. I don't understand it. You're just like a multi, multi-talented person. If you're looking to follow somebody who I think is gonna be very, very successful, if he's already not insanely successful, uh, check out Nicholas Doretti. I'm gonna link him down below. And if you need any graphic design work, well, Nicholas, he is your man. I hope, Nicholas, you get like a ton of work from this. I was gonna try to FaceTime you, but uh, I think you're in Australia, and I, I believe it's pretty late there right now, so uh, we'll have to chat some more later. And the reason why I like this logo so much is that it felt very me, it felt personal. It has this nice simplistic style, which is really what I was going for. It's easy to tell that it's Madi Hapoya, M-H, it's very, very clear. The style is really flexible, you can do a whole bunch of different looks with this logo, which I really, really like. And I feel like it has this like playfulness to it. It's, it's not too serious, but at the same time, it's very, very legit. You see this logo and you're like, oh, that's a legit logo. And I think that's what in the end made me choose this logo is that it felt very me. It felt very personal. It didn't, it didn't feel like a logo that I had to kind of like build my brand into or build some sort of brand awareness. It just felt like me right away. Honestly, you did an incredible job. It's way better than I could have ever imagined. But there were also some really, really great designs um, that I was, especially number one and two, I was like, I don't know which one. A lot of people were saying that, uh, you know, number two, but I felt more drawn to number one. Um, so yeah, number two was Med U Art. Uh, I loved this logo. It's a really, really impressive logo, and it's probably 
the best logo, I think. The design is super cool. It has kind of the M in there and then there's an H in there. It's almost like a little Easter egg finding that H in there. And then it's kind of like a mountain. So I feel like that, that, that does describe a lot of things that I'm really into. But at the same time, it felt more like a logo for uh, an outdoor clothing brand or a backpack company or some like rugged outdoorsy uh, logo. It felt like a company's logo, not like a personal logo. Does that, does that make any sense? Because this is a great logo. It just doesn't feel personal enough for me. If I was starting like a clothing brand, this would be a really, really cool logo that I would, I would take hands down right now. But because it's my personal logo, it just didn't have that personal touch, that, that the little bit that I was missing. But honestly, great job, man. I really, really liked what you did. It's super impressive. Uh, if you guys need any logos designed for you, um, MedUart, uh, I highly, highly recommend this guy because he clearly knows what he's doing. And also, we would love to work with you in the future. Hopefully, there's some projects that we can work on with graphics or merch or something. I don't, I don't know what it's gonna be yet, but uh, we would love to work with you in the future. Third place was Patrick Bessie or Pessie. I, I don't know how you say your name. Are you, are you Finnish, Bessie? That's how I would say it in Finnish, but if I was, you know, if it was an English name, it would be Pessie. I really like how simple this logo was and I liked how, how it has the M and the H and a, and a nice clean way. It's very clearly Madia Poya MH. It's just missing that little bit of, of an it factor. I don't know what it is. It's hard to explain. It's, it's a really cool logo. I really liked it. It's nice and sleek and simple, but it's missing that little bit that makes me think like this, this is it. This is definitely it for me. But an incredible job, Patrick. Uh, you deserve a lot of people following you and I hope you're gonna get a ton of work from this little shout out. Um, and I too would love to work with you in the future. You did a really, really amazing job. Man, it feels, uh, it feels really, really good having my own logo. Thank you so much, Nicholas, for designing this thing. I don't know how I'm gonna thank you. Well, I guess I guess I gotta pay you, and then hopefully, hopefully this this little shout out will will also pay you even more uh, in the future. But I also learned some interesting things through this this little process. I really like being able to reach out to you guys to hire you guys because there's a lot of talented people um, subscribed to this channel, watching this channel. So it's really cool being able to work with you guys. Like for example, hiring my editor Matt. Uh, yeah, he's like he's a part of the team. I get to work with him every single day, and he was just one of you guys um, not too long ago, like a year ago. He was just somebody that followed the channel. And the same thing here, uh, Nicholas. I don't know if you've been watching the channel for a while, but now we get to start working together and I find that super cool. And uh, through this process, I, I learned two big things. Uh, well, I mean, I've kind of already known this, but, or it's almost like a refresher. And the first thing has to do with doing free work. We've probably all thought about this a lot and we've probably all done free work at some point in our careers. And I realized the more I was thinking about it that the only people that really complain and say you should never do any free work are the people that never really made it or the people that never really found their place in that area. Everyone who has made it in their area, whether it's photography or videography or graphic design, whatever it is, you have at some point done free work for sure. I, I, I don't even believe that there's one person who hasn't done any free work. Me personally, I did a ton of free work in the beginning and I was totally fine with that. I was fine doing free work um, for the experience, to make connections, those relationships with other companies, to learn. I have nothing but positive experiences from doing free work, but eventually you kind of work yourself out of that. Once you get good enough, people wanna start hiring you and you don't need to do free work anymore. But the people that get stuck in that state of doing free work or for very, very cheap, I feel like they never get to a place where they can really charge for their services and of course that's gonna suck. That's gonna be a crappy place to be in. 
Um, but I think that's more of a sign that you should probably either, two things, either you're terrible at the business side of things and you really need to work on that because if you're really good, you should be getting paid for that. Doesn't matter what you're good at. If you're really, really good at something, there's a way to make money from that. And the other thing is that maybe you're not actually that good in that area. Maybe you need to pivot a little bit and do something a little bit differently um, because if you're still not getting paid and you're just having to do free work, well, something is up, something is wrong. But free work can open up so many doors. It can be so valuable and so worth it. For example, um, uh, Nicholas or Medu Art or Patrick, uh, I'm hoping you guys get a ton of work from this, especially you guys uh, second and third place. Uh, even though you're, you didn't get chosen, I still believe and hope you guys get a ton of work and exposure from this. And even the people that didn't make it in the top three, you still got a good experience, a good reason to make a logo for somebody. So that that teaches you things and then you get to compare it with the ones that were chosen and you can learn from that. It's just a good overall experience when you're just trying to learn and, and kind of get to a place in your career where you can really start charging money for your work. When you find your place, you won't need to do free work anymore. People were gonna be willing to pay for your skills, your services, your talents. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna be a problem making money at that point. So don't be scared to do free work. We all need to start somewhere. The number two thing that I learned is that you really, really need to go the extra mile. All three of the top candidates went above and beyond. They showed multiple different ways of using the logo or different versions of the logo. They put it on things like different mediums like hats or bottles or different places to kind of show you what the, the logo could be like. And, and Nicholas even animated the logo to again, sell me a little bit more of like the possibilities with this logo. You can tell that the top three guys were professionals. They knew exactly what they were doing. They didn't just send me one little logo and that's it. They explained why they designed things. They showed me, um, they made me understand why this is a good logo. Plus they just looked amazing. They went above and beyond and it paid off. A lot of times in life, if you just go that extra mile, that extra little bit, that's when things really start to happen because that's when you're making really interesting work and you start to kind of elevate yourself above all the people that are just kind of, they're just, they're just doing good work. But to do that great work, you really need to go the extra mile. So yeah, I just wanna say a massive thanks to all of the people who submitted their designs. And, and I just wanna keep doing more of these things where I can uh, collaborate with you guys and hopefully elevate some of you guys and show off the things that you're capable of. I just feel so lucky in my own career and I, I feel like sometimes all you need is that little push from somebody else or somebody else to give you an opportunity. And so I wanna do that as often as possible, give you guys opportunities to just grow in your careers. And most of all, thank you, Nicholas. You did an incredible job. I'm so excited, so pumped to see uh, that logo everywhere. I feel like I have to probably like um, maybe design a logo neon light up there. Peter took the dope squad sign, so uh, I think that's gonna have to happen. Maybe merch, I don't know. I don't really know what I should use this logo for yet, but uh, I'm really excited. And uh, I'm gonna be working with these guys more to hopefully do some really, really cool stuff. Maybe even, Nicholas, should we do like some like animated, like motion graphic stuff? I don't know, maybe, maybe incorporate that in the video somehow? I don't know, let's see. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys tomorrow. Oh, uh, before I forget, a lot of you are joining the Discord server. It's kind of like a, like a, is it like a chat room? I, I almost, uh, I'm really interested to see what we can do with that little community. Talk to each other. Hopefully you guys meet other filmmakers and other like-minded people on there. And also I thought it was really funny that some of you were getting notified by the Discord server that I had a new video up before YouTube had even notified you. Um, I guess, uh, that's another good reason for Discord. And if you're not, um, if you're not, you know, the bell thing, if you haven't done the bell thing for, for this channel, I don't know, or subscribe, maybe, maybe you should subscribe to the bell, like. I feel like I haven't said that in forever. Felt weird. Did it feel weird for you guys? Felt weird.